Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Could you tell me a little bit about your work with biobanking? And let's just start with what is biobanking? It's a good question. <laughs> so biobanking is a it's it's a science in itself. Um, it's one of the fastest growing fields in the life sciences, and it's getting a lot of attention mainly because of Precision Health. Mm -hmm. And really, it's the acquisition of samples, bio samples from human subjects that are cataloged alongside all your clinical phenotypes, whatever comes in when you're seeing your physician, the EMR data, uh, as well as any epidemiology work and other health sciences like population health science workup that's done. And then it's taking those samples and banking them. So we're following you long term um, and, and the samples keep collecting over time and we're studying them. We're are they all different types? Is it like, are we talking a lock of side. hair, cord yep. blood? What are we talking? Anything and everything that can be coming wow. from your body. We try to bank it and we bank it in a way that's very strategic towards understanding the current needs of science and the bench work being done and how that's going to translate back into the clinic but also in a way that is not wasteful because um, it can become a financial crutch for sure. a lot of institutions. We really look at everything from biofluids, urine, stool, from microbi uh, microbiome data to your blood obviously and the cell types in your blood to tissue and tumors and understanding the microenvironments in those tumors and tissues. And what's essential to that is the workflows and both on the operation side as well as the scientific methodologies to how we isolate these cells and store them long term. Now currently, do we have people paying to bank their samples or is it more really just a research end at this point? Yeah, so a lot of soft money, you know, research end of pieces, but these banks have become so invaluable. Um, and we're at a point now where the NIH and a lot of, you know, major groups are, and even patient advocacy groups and big, and, um, big biotech and big pharma, they're all pitching in a lot now, um, both on the population size with Kaiser and other big groups and institutionally and academically with groups like Stanford, where we get very unique rare disease subset of patients and cohorts here that are invaluable to the new technologies. And the point of biobanks really is not just the you know, collection of these samples, it's the studying of these samples in a world that's changing in technology so fast. Mm. And tomorrow we might have a brand new piece of technology just like we have new cell phones every day. Yeah. And you know, if we don't have the samples to retest right. or the samples to even pull together and accelerate the fund fundamental reasoning behind those new technologies and sure. validate them, we're going to be sitting behind the times. It almost sounds like you're building kind of a library here, yes. and we don't even know what we're going to use it for, but we need to catalog the data at this point. You got it. Wow. That's a very good analogy. That yeah. is fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, thanks for having me.